Good evening, good evening, and welcome to Harvest Christian Center Online. Uh, this is our Wednesday night Bible study, but we will not be studying tonight. I want to share our panel with you here. This is Jim Nelson. Hey, he's a talker of the bunch. Uh, and then Miss Kathy Nelson, our worship leader. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I waved. Uh, she, she waved. <laughs> Miss Wendy Woody, as you know. Uh, my significant other, she would tell you that she's the better half. There we are. Uh, now we can see it, right? If you're online, we would ask you that you uh, just type online on in the comments or hi or something like that. Let us know you're there. It says test broadcast. Is that right? Our, mine says test broadcast. No, it's not. We're live? No. Okay. Well, that's going to be real awkward, isn't it? That's all right. It's do your thing, babe. This is Tim Nichols. How? Hi. Hi. And Miss Crystal Nichols. Hello. So we're coming to you tonight for a uh, update of where we're going and how we're going to go. Uh, I know a lot of people have said, well, are you canceling church? Are you canceling church? Are you canceling church? Let me make this clear. We are not canceling church. We're just doing church differently. We're going to take it outside the walls. We're not going to be having church inside. We're going to be having church outside. What does that mean to you? We are going to use Facebook Live, YouTube, uh, several other uh, streaming channels that we're working to do. Uh, and now not only will we be able to stream the messages, but you're going to get to be part of the worship experience as well. Uh, we have that set up where we can now legally do that. And we're extremely excited. Uh, I know that COVID-19 is something that people are, are worried about. And we are trying to protect our family to the best that we can. Uh, so we decided, or I decided as the pastor, that, uh, that we're going to go online. How are we going to do that? Good question. Um, we're going to do that by doing it this way. Wednesday night, like tonight, we will do an interactive Bible study. So beginning next week, we'll be in Revelation chapter 4. We're going to break it down verse by verse. If you have a question, you'll be able to interact. Oh, first three. Yes. We're, uh, we did verse 3, didn't we? Three. Yes. We'll be starting on verse 5, I think. Okay. But, uh, but chapter 4 of Revelation, and you'll be able to ask questions. You'll be able to either call in, uh, which we'll have a line set up for that, and someone that will answer those calls, uh, that'll be on the screen, or you can just type in a question, and we'll be able to answer those as we go. Uh, now, for those that are um, that don't enjoy technology, uh, we've got a plan for that, too. We're going to be able to work with those guys. Uh, we'll either be able to do a Zoom call or a conference call where they can be actively involved, or we have CDs and DVDs that we'll be taking out to our elderly and shut-in that do not use um, social media of any form. What are we doing Sunday morning? I'm glad you asked. Uh, <laughs> Sunday morning, we are going at 9 a.m. Uh, and let me explain to you why we're doing this. We don't want to get in a habit of having church whenever it's convenient. God isn't a convenience. So at 9 a.m., we'll go live with our children's church. At 9 a.m., Miss uh, Beverly will have a interactive or at least a demonstrative message that she'll share at 9 a.m. Uh, for all the children. So you want your kids involved in that because there's going to be questions that she asks and they'll be able to email or, or uh, apply, call her and talk back and forth on that. Uh, it, it's a pretty amazing thing that we're going to be able to do there with our children's church. Uh, then Micah and the youth department, they'll be doing uh, some sort of interactive things this week. Uh, they won't be online necessarily. They'll be uh, in their own group, but uh, but they're going to be meeting every week uh, via video chat or something. And then at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings, here's what your part will be. Uh, you'll go online. You'll click, I'm here. You'll check in at Harvest Christian Center, so it'll be on your page, so we get the gospel out to more people than we ever have. And we'll have worship. We'll have a time of announcements. And then we'll have preaching. We're also going to have, and we're really excited about this. I'm very excited about this. We're going to have an uh, online altar call. So we're going to have people manning the phones, 
for two hours after service where you could call in with your prayer request. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can call in and we can help you find Christ, get you set up with a Bible-believing church wherever you're at, whether that be online or in person. Uh, we're also going to have where you can, uh, on the screen will be where you can message, email us, and then we can call you back or however that you choose to work with that. Uh, but we're pretty excited about the way that's going to work too. But the, the option is simply this. We understand that people think, well, they, they're going to have to cancel churches. But I believe God's given us the greatest opportunity that we've ever had. I believe we have an opportunity to literally do church differently. We're going to get to do church in a way we've never had to, the opportunity to do church. And when the scripture says that if we ask, he will move mountains, think about this. Four seconds after I speak it, my friend John in the Philippines will get the message. He'll be able to receive it and watch the sermons online. So we're excited about what God is doing. Uh, while some believe that this is a terrible thing, we believe God is just opening doors for us to do things differently. So once again, Sunday morning goes like this. At 9 a.m., tune in. You've got Miss Bev and Children's Church. Have your kids set in because she's going to ask them questions, and then if they call back, there'll be prizes. Whether she mails them or drops them off at your house, we're not sure yet all the uh, logistics of that yet, but we are going to do that. And then DVDs will be delivered. We'll also, and, and I know that people don't like to talk about money, but we'll also uh, mail out uh, tithing envelopes if you would like. Uh, we will have time set up here at the church that you can drop tithes off for our for those that are a higher risk for COVID-19, what we really want to do is to actually... Uh, hi, Jenny Carpenter. Uh, she's out there. I just saw it pop up. Um, but I know, word, squirrel, chasing squirrels. But we, we're trying our best not to do that. But uh, we're new at this, so bear with us. Uh, and I'm going to let some of the others share in just a minute. But uh, for those that are higher risk, maybe you need uh, the dreaded TP. And, uh, and that you can't find anywhere. We don't want you out at Safeway and Thriftway and Buy Mart and Walmart bumping into 100 people, uh, which Mr. Nichols and Miss Nichols will explain in a moment why that we don't want that. But if you will let us know, we will, uh, if, if you need grocery shopping, we'll come and get your card and your grocery list or your cash and your grocery list. We'll go do your shopping for you and we'll bring that back. If you, if you want us to come and pick up your tithes, why do we say that? Because the church must go on. Uh, when the pandemic is over, we want to be as strong as we've ever been. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're going to work dil diligently. Uh, Miss Bev is working at the church. Every one of us that is on staff is working diligently to make sure that we are interacting with you. Another thing, and I'm going to let uh, Miss Wendy and Miss Kathy talk about this uh, real quick, is... Um, what are our elders going to be doing during this time? Everything. Everything. Very good. <laughs> our elders will be contacting everybody on their list every week. If you have a prayer concern, if you don't, um, they're going to be uh, sharing scripture and prayer with you. Um, more interactive. Because we don't have the ability right now to meet together as one big family, we will have our elders interacting on an individual basis with our um, congregants so that we stay connected in the healthiest way possible. Do you want to add to that? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm watching you scroll on your computer. Sorry. Squirrel. So, <laughs> add a scroll moment. Um, as elders, we will be contacting you. Like Miss Wendy said, we will call you. Um, if you need something from us, please feel free to contact us. We will be reaching out to you. Um, we're going to do phone conversations, Bible studies through the phone if you're more comfortable with that. I know that we're willing to come and meet you on your doorstep. We are trying to keep this as contained as possible, so we're not going to be having big groups over at our house. We're not going to ask you to host groups at your house. We're going to do individual Bible studies, or I might even set up something on version for my group of people and we will just do the Bible study together and then call each other on it. So we'll find a way to stay connected. Um, I know that is something that's on all of the elders' hearts. We want to stay connected. 
We don't want this just to be, you're on your own, we're on our own, see you when it's over. We are gonna stay a family. And if you know of anybody that um, needs us to call them that may not come to this church, give, call your elders, let us know. We'll reach out past our walls. We wanna reach everybody. The goal is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ while we're loving on our folks, but also be able to spread the gospel beyond the walls of our church. I, and I guess I probably need to be cautious what I say and how I say it, but we're not blaming anyone for us not having church inside the walls. We're thanking God that we have this opportunity to present the gospel and that mountains can be moved via the internet, mm -hmm. and we can reach out in a way we never have. I'm excited to not see every other post on social media a political post. <laughs> I'm excited to see every other post is about how we're going to do church differently. I'm excited to see senior pastors who are not technolog technologically advanced asking their teenagers who have not been able to plug into the church, literally come in and set up services for them. And, and it, it's, almost, uh, it's almost like a new baby for us. While we will miss the hugs and the handshakes and the loving each other, we're going to have church. And it will be up to you to be involved in that. Uh, it'll be up to you to make sure that you get plugged into this. I know it's not easy. I know it's different. But like we said, we're going to show up on your doorstep if we need to. Uh, if you have a need, you call your elder. If they can't handle it, they'll let us know and we'll make sure. Now, I'm not telling you that financially I can pay everybody's bills. But we're going to take care of everyone that we can in every way that we can. We have online giving. We'll have hours here at the church that you can drop off your tithes and offerings. We will mail you envelopes. We will do whatever we need to do to make sure that we are, we are taken care of and that you are taken care of and the blessing of that. Now, to explain just a little bit about why we're doing this, uh, first of all, again, as I said, this was my decision. So if you don't like it, don't pick on the staff. Uh, if you don't like it, don't call your governor and complain. Call me. This is my decision. As the shepherd of this flock, I believe God told me clearly that there is plenty of grass to feed the sheep. You're just going to have to feed them differently. And I'm going to trust him in that. I believe this is a moment where revival could break out in the land. Mm -hmm. And do I think that COVID-19 or the coronavirus is bad? I do. Do I think that the, um, the fear is maybe even worse? Quite possibly. But nevertheless, we're going to do everything we can to ensure that our sheep, our flock, our family are taken care of. Met with several elders today. We get updates from the CDC and OHA and WHO and the City of Sweet Home just emailed me another update. Uh, we are continuously working on this. Uh, but at the end of the day, until the threat isn't here, we're going to have church. We're just going to have it outside the walls. Now, I want to explain to you why that is real quickly. Uh, and actually, I'm going to let the Nichols do that in a little bit of detail. Uh, because one of the things I think that we forget is, uh, you know, I can hug you and you can hug me. And, and that's just the two of us. But it extends beyond that. And so Tim is a manager of a uh, local store. We won't plug the store. But, uh, but he's going to share a little bit about what his day consisted of today. Uh, so again, like Pastor Mark had just said, I am a uh, manager at our local convenience store. Um, through my doors, I get over 1,200 people, which means I come in contact every day with 1,200 people, meaning that this is a virus that could spread easily. Uh, I don't wash that 1,200 people off until I go home and take a shower. If you come into my store then that's how easily it could spread. You're not only spreading from yourself to another person, but yet everybody that they've come, come in contact with and everybody that you have come in contact with. And Crystal works at the local gymnasium here. 
uh, gymnasium, not a gymnasium, a local gym. Uh, and uh, see, this is live, so we're working here. Bear with us. Uh, I can tell you without a doubt, uh, I love going to my gym, but I, I find myself now uh, cleaning the machine before I get on it, cleaning it during while I'm working out, and cleaning it afterwards, and then cleaning my hands. So, Miss Crystal, explain a little bit about how things can go. So... We've stepped up our cleaning because you don't realize how much you touch in a single moment. I'm going to go a little bit different path than Pastor was having me go. An example I have is you don't think about what you touch. I went to pick up Tim's prescriptions at the pharmacy, and I had to get in my purse. Well, to get into my purse, I had to touch every single thing to find the right card to pay for his prescriptions. And you don't realize what your hands touch. So when you go into a public facility like the gym, we have sanitizers that are hospital grade. We encourage people to spray down equipment. Whether or not they follow that is up to them generally. But now as staff, we're going behind people and we're cleaning machines, we're cleaning equipment. We have spray bottles that you can literally pick up from the table and just pack one bottle with you the whole time. You can spray the equipment down before you work out, spray it down when you're done. One gentleman sprayed the rubber floor mat down today because he was laying on it doing sit-ups instead of grabbing a mat, using it that way. We have precautions put into place, but even then, people aren't venturing out as much because it is such a serious risk. One thing I'd also like to add is that when you go out into public, you're also taking your husband, your wife, your kids, um, that is more of a chance to spread a virus or get a virus. If you have to go to a public place, if at all possible, go by yourself. One person goes in or one person gets what they need. Which is absolutely excellent advice. With Tim and Crystal Nichols, and one of the reasons I have them here today is they've been here since day one, since we arrived here seven years ago. And, and we're doing things we've never done before right. in ways we never have. Because between the two of them, we're looking at several thousand people a day that are coming in contact with us. With Miss Kathy, she works for the city of Waterloo, and then Mr. Jim does construction, and with that, they're not in contact with as many people. But if we're not careful, I shake his hand, I shake their hand, now they've come in contact with just as many people through this. And our goal is to, um, well, I'll just be open for a minute and uh, not that I haven't been honest but I do want to share from my heart for a minute uh, I believe that the up and coming millennials that they're the church of the future I believe in the young people I believe in every ounce of that and I, I will fight for my young people in my children's department but as a pastor I depend on my seasoned saints prayers that have been there and done that they've come through the depressions and they've come through the disease. And we're going to protect them with everything we have in us. We're going to guard them. Uh, so whatever that means, if you have a need, uh, you know, I noticed Miss Lily Anderson is on here, Miss Lily Anderson Ferris. If she needs us to go pick up her meds, then we will swing by her house and pick up her card and head over and pick up her meds. And we'll do a front porch ministry by dropping them off and then uh, and give her some lice off her hands while we're there. Uh, but at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we're taken care of. In doing so, we want to not miss a beat for his ministry. So we're going to do whatever it takes to do the ministry. We're not going to let God's word not go forth. I'm going to pray for my brother every day on his job. I'm going to pray for her as jobs may get tough, as finances may get tough. We understand that. But God has not been caught by surprise. And, and when he shared with me about the sheep, and he said, you can feed them in different ways without bringing them together. And I'm thinking, Lord, here I have fought for something. And we know and we understand we've got all the calls and the letters as as the hundreds and hundreds of pastors that we've talked to 
uh, and overseers and uh, talking to. It's, we know that we scream faith. If you had faith, you'd meet anyway. Well, the law doesn't see it that way. Insurance companies don't see it that way. And to be perfectly honest with you, my friends in churches in other areas of America that are having 40 and 50 cases of coronavirus breaking out in their Pentecostal churches, screaming, if you have faith, God won't allow it to happen. I'm all about faith, but we're going to take care of our people too. Mm -hmm. And so we're not canceling church. We're not canceling church. If you tune in Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, you're going to see Miss Bev giving a lesson for the children. Every day on social media, we're going to update you what's going on. We're going to keep you. We're going to have interviews with our own uh, house doctor, Lady Diana, who can a update us on COVID-19. We didn't bring her in tonight, but we're going to do that. Uh, next Wednesday night, there'll be a couple of us sitting here, one running a computer and one running a Bible study. And we'll be able to answer questions and, and literally plug in. Um, we're going to take care of you. And we're going to do it the absolute best that we can. Not because anybody said we had to, but because we love you. And we believe that instead of this being the worst time in church history, this is the greatest opportunity. Where we've ever. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Martin Luther quoted this, and I will hush and let them say something if they want. Then we'll close out for tonight. But Martin Luther said it like this. He said, they've invited us to preach in hell. Is this a trap or the greatest opportunity yet? I believe with everything in me, churches going online is going to be the greatest opportunity for a lost and dying world. But we need your help. We need you to send your giving, your gifts. We need you to go online during service time mm -hmm. and, and share it to your page. Let your friends who do not know Christ as their Lord and Savior, let them see this. Your friends who maybe are struggling and hurting, we're going to have a relevant message from the Holy Spirit. We're going to do whatever it takes, and we're going to have altar calls, and we're going to have open lines so that we can answer those calls because we're still going to have church. Uh, this is Pastor Mark saying, I love you. Guys, anything else you want to add? Uh, yes. What's the easiest and quickest way that we can get a hold of you guys? Uh, you can call Harvest Christian Center. Can you give me the number? I can. It is 541-828-0279. Uh, 818-0279. Uh, Micah, who's running camera, can you put that on screen now? And then you can, uh, he's going to put that on the bottom of the screen for you. And then uh, harvestcog.net, you can go there and click contact. You can contact us on Facebook where we check our uh Instagram, social media, uh, Twitter. You can DM us there if you would like, uh, or you can call our cell phones. Uh, most of the elders' cell phones are out there for members, but if you're not a member, uh, we will get in touch with you or we will open the doors for you to get in touch with us. Uh, and, and trust me when I say this, every elder on our staff is on board of meeting with you if necessary in a uh, social distancing <laughs> But, but God can span six feet if we're praying together. Mm -hmm. So we want you to know that. The number is 541-818. It's right there on the screen. 0279. And that's checked every couple of hours except through the night. Uh, and then during Sundays, there'll be someone actually manning that phone. Uh, and then harvestcog.net. Or catch us on Facebook, uh, any of our social media. Um, and we will have a list of those uh, post it up for you on Sunday. So anything you'd like to add? Um, I got one one quick thing. It's just uh, for everybody out there, try not to live in fear. Uh, fear is the opposite of faith, I believe. God has this at hand. Amen. This is no surprise to him. Ah. Um, be knowledgeable. I mean, obviously, wash your hands. I've washed my hands more than, more than way more than I normally <laughs> do. But, uh, you know, just, just don't live in fear. Don't live in panic. Uh, God is still God, and he's got this, so. Oh, we, and we believe in this is the greatest time ever. Yeah. We're taking cautions, but, dude, we're having church. Right. I might get saved. <laughs> so um, just to clarify, for Sunday morning at 10, the worship team is going to be on the stage, and we are streaming worship live. So for those of 
you guys in the church that are thinking, oh, no, I'm going to miss worship, you're not. So join us at 10 o'clock, turn your computers on, turn your audio up, and worship with me and the worship team. We're doing three songs, 10 a.m. sharp. Is it okay if they worship in their pajamas? Yes, I might wear my pajamas. No, I won't. <laughs> she will not be will wearing not wear pajamas. pajamas. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. That was a scary thought. But maybe I not for Jim, but pajamas. I don't know. Cute pajamas. Uh, now, by the way, every one of us have pajama bottoms on right now, so there's no, <laughs> just, just kidding. Um, Miss Wendy, anything? Just know that we're here for you. The elders, the deacons, all the staff, mm-hmm. Pastor Mark and I, we're here for you. This is not, um, even though we're using social distancing, distancing Our hearts are knitted together closer than ever. This is our opportunity to love beyond borders and still show Christ every way we can and still obey the laws of the land. Yeah, and and I know that some are saying that, you know, well, the government is making us do this and all this. This has nothing to do with this. Trust me when I tell you, this is us taking care of our people. It has nothing to do with anything else. I refuse to blame anyone for what God is going to use for good. I refuse to blame anyone for what God is going to use for good. Social distancing, elbows, uh, they say don't do that either, but we're going to elbow love anyway. Um, We love you guys. I mean that. Uh, Excited about what God's doing. We're going to blow your social media up because uh, we're going to blow your phones up. And when your elder calls you, it's not going to be a text that says, hey, how you doing? It's going to be, man, what can we do? Let's pray. Uh, I got a scripture the Lord gave me. I'm going to share it with you. Uh, Give me prayer concerns. Don't be afraid to share your prayer concerns with these guys because, believe me, they take it to the throne. And uh, and then if they get it to us, and we'll take it there too. So uh, we love you next week, uh, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. church, uh, 10 a.m. worship. 11 or 10 30 service uh with the, the preaching of the word i'm back in town so you're stuck with me uh but that's okay god loves me anyway uh next wednesday night revelation chapter 4 will begin around verse 5 uh but we'll post that and let you know and you can interact with us hey we love you god bless you and have a wonderful night and remember faith not fear god's still on the throne amen, amen. let us pray with you Thank you, Father, for another day, and I thank you for an amazing opportunity that you've given the church to teach us to do it differently. God, I am excited that a a world in fear is going to have a place to turn. I am excited, dear God, that a world in fear will have a place to turn. And God, I want to thank you that you've allowed us this time tonight and for these men and women that have came out and for the ones that will be coming out week after week to do these things for a worship team that's going to come and and do those. God, I pray right now a hedge of protection around our people. I pray that you minister to their fear. Let their faith rise up. Give them a verse to hang on to. God, I pray that those that have the virus and those that have flu and sickness and, and diabetes and every other disease out there, God, that you would minister to them. Let us see miraculous things in you, beginning with salvation, through the healing of the nation. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Catch you later.